Okay, so today we're going to begin a new unit, and uh, this unit is on momentum and impulse. Momentum is sometimes called linear momentum to distinguish it from angular momentum, which is uh, another important concept that we're going to cover in about uh, two units from now. Momentum is the mass of an object times its velocity, and it is represented by the letter P. Uh, momentum is a vector, which should be clear because velocity uh, is a vector, and uh, mass is a scalar, so the product of the mass and the velocity must also be a vector. This means that momentum has both a magnitude and a direction. The direction of the momentum is exactly the same as the direction of the velocity. The magnitude of the momentum depends both on the velocity and the mass. So if two objects have the same velocity, but one has a larger mass, say a car and a motorcycle uh, that are driving in the same direction with the same speed, then the car will have a much larger momentum than the motorcycle. If two objects have the same mass, but one's traveling at a larger velocity, then the faster object's going to have a larger momentum. So the units, uh, the standard units for momentum is kilograms uh, meters per second, which should make sense since it is the mass times velocity. So uh, mass of kilograms times meters per second. If we want to find the kinetic energy uh, of an object, we can use our old equation, uh, one half the mass times the velocity squared. But sometimes it'll be easier to find the momentum of an object than its velocity. In this case, we can use our formula here. Uh, the kinetic energy is equal to the momentum p squared divided by 2 and divided by the mass. This is really the same formula. Uh, we can write uh, velocity as equal to the momentum divided by the mass. So uh, that means we can then plug p over m for v into our equation for kinetic energy. Then we, then we square it, and we get uh, 1 half times the uh, mass times the momentum squared uh, divided by the mass squared. So yeah, so we get uh, momentum squared divided by 2 divided by the mass. So exactly the uh, same thing in the formula. So momentum is a powerful concept because the momentum of a closed system is conserved. That means that if uh, something with a large amount of momentum collides with something that has a small amount of momentum, so uh, we can add up the uh, two initial momentums, and then after the collision, uh, the sum of those uh, final momentums will be equal to the initial. Uh, so for example, if a uh, basketball hits a ping pong ball, then the basketball will keep pretty much moving as it has, well, the ping pong ball will have this drastic change in direction. I also want to highlight that momentum is a vector. If a car is traveling east at 50 miles per hour, and then it travels north at 50 miles an hour, that, then that's a significant change in momentum. Um, so yeah. So um, also, uh, just as we, uh, uh, we want to think about um, reframing the kinetic energy as a function of momentum, we can also reframe uh, Newton's second law as a function of momentum. The second law is that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration, and the acceleration uh, is the change in velocity per time. So the force is equal to the mass times the change in velocity per unit time. If the mass is constant, uh, the change in momentum is the same uh, as the uh, change in velocity times the mass, so we can rewrite the second law as the force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time. In fact, this is not a rewrite. Uh, this is the original. When Newton first wrote the uh, second law, he expressed it in terms of the change in momentum rather than the change in the uh, velocity or acceleration. As long as the mass is constant, then the uh, two forms of the Newton second law are equivalent. And uh, in fact, um, the momentum form of Newton's second law is universal. However, in special relativity, as the velocity of an object becomes a significant fraction of the speed of light, the mass starts to increase. So that means the force is equal to uh, ma is only true for so-called classical mechanics, where velocities are uh, not close to the speed of light. The uh, change in momentum uh, uh, of a particle is called the impulse, and it is represented by the letter i. Uh, impulse is also a vector, and it has the same units as momentum, uh, kilograms, meters per second. We can rewrite Newton's second law and find that the impulse, or change in momentum, is equal to the force times the amount of time that this uh, force has been applied. So we see it here. So our impulse, our I, is equal to the net force on an object times the time, and that is equal to the uh, change in momentum uh, of the uh, process. So. Uh, this means that um, so 
So yeah, if you're being uh, observant, you'll notice that this is really exactly what we were doing before uh, when we solved for the change in velocity. Uh, by uh, uh, taking the force and dividing uh, by the mass, we would then multiply the acceleration by the time to get the change in velocity. So the uh, total process is force times time divided by mass. When using impulse, uh, force times time gives us the change in momentum. And then to find the change in velocity, we would then divide the uh, force times time divided by the mass to get the change in velocity. Notice either way, it's the same process. So uh, impulse is equal to the uh, net force multiplied by the time. And that's equal to the change in momentum uh, represented by the letter uh, P. The uh, momentum of an object is a vector. So that means if an impulse is applied to an object, it may speed it up or it may slow it down. Uh, so the motion of the object uh, will speed up if the uh, uh, impulse is in the uh, same direction as the direction of motion. And if it's in the opposite direction of the uh, motion, then the object will slow down. And if the impulse is at a 90 degree angle to the direction of motion, then it can turn an object and change the direction of the momentum with no change in speed. Notice this is just like applying a force, an acceleration, um, so impulse can speed up, slow down, or turn an object. Okay, so to practice this, let's do a pretty simple um, impulse question. A block of uh, three kilograms is sitting on a frictionless surface, and the uh, block is initially at rest. Uh, a force of uh, 8 newtons is applied for uh, 3 seconds, and we want to know the, what is the uh, final uh, velocity. Well, we want to know the change in velocity, and we know the force and the time. That means we can find the impulse. And the impulse is equal to the uh, force. So the impulse is equal to the uh, force times time. So the force is 8 newtons and the time is 3 seconds. So that means the impulse is 24 kilograms uh, meters per second. So uh, the initial momentum is 0, right? It started at rest, so we can multiply mass times uh, velocity. And so that means that the final momentum is just going to be the same as our change in momentum, right? So the 24 kilograms meters per second. And so then uh, we know that the momentum is mass times velocity. So the momentum divided by the mass is the uh, velocity, and that uh, got in the way, and so then the velocity is equal to our momentum divided by mass. So it's 24 kilograms uh, meters per second divided by 3 kilograms, so our velocity here is uh, 8 meters per second. So in some ways that's probably easier than the way we did it before by finding the acceleration, then the uh, change in velocity, and then uh, doing that to find it. So, but also it gives us uh, two different ways of uh, solving for this question. All right, so uh, we've coded up some questions for you to do, and uh, then in the next set of notes, we're gonna look at the difference between impulse and uh, work.